Good morning, Year 10. I hope you're well and having a lovely day. Please could you write the date and the title of emotive and factual language. For your do now, I'd like you to spend five minutes answering these two questions. What makes Atticus's speech judicial? And what part of Atticus's speech generated most emotion in your opinion? So please pause the video for five minutes to do that now. Okay, so these are some ideas you might have written down. A judicial speech is a concluding argument. So his speech is judicial because he summarises the overall case. He uses lots of factual information to give his argument an authoritative case and he uses emotive language to appeal to their emotions to convince them of his argument as well. So the answer to the second question, what part of Atticus's speech generated most emotion? Um, obviously this will be different for everyone, but this is an idea. In my opinion, it was the parts about the victim's motivations and the, the relation to racism, as this would have been an extremely difficult situation to have been involved in these times, also very unfair. Okay, so you may want to add to your answers in your book with what's in this video, so please pause the video now if you want to do that. If not, let's just move on. Okay, so environmental issues. What I would like you to do is make a list of as many environmental issues we are facing today as you can think of. Which of these do you think most directly affects you and why? So please pause the video for five minutes to do that now. Okay, so these are some of the things you may have written. If you didn't get all of them, please could you add them to your list. Air pollution, marine pollution, shrinking ice caps, climate change, global fuel consumption, reliance on fossil fuels, the effects of overpopulation and growing population. So um, something you may have written down for the next one, obviously it will be different for everyone. In my opinion, um, and I don't study geography so I don't know the facts, it would be the growing overpopulation as I believe this may lead to an increase in all the other environmental issues. So more people means more air pollution, more reliance on fossil fuels, more litter, etc. So please make sure you've answered these questions as fully as you can before you move on. Okay, so Greta Thun Thunberg, I think it's pronounced Thunberg, um, five minutes. What I'd like you to do is watch the clip and answer the question. Why do you think Greta Thunberg has risen to fame? So please pause the video, follow the link and then answer the question. So these are some things you may have written down. Firstly, people have been looking for a hero to champion this cause. Social media is key in activist recruiting and she has clearly taken up this role for a climate revolution. Secondly, her message is a scary one. She has tapped into people's fear. Thirdly, she is young. You can't ignore young people, they make a bigger impact. Fourthly, she practices what she preaches. A lot of adults or celebrities who champion this cause do not, so she is taken seriously. Finally, she's normal and extremely humble. She's not doing it for fame. So if there's any ideas you want to add to your list, please pause the video to jot them down now. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at emotive language versus logical factual language. So I'd like you to get your copy of Greta Thunberg's speech to the UN, read through the speech, and then highlight emotive arguments in one colour and factual arguments in another colour. So emotive arguments, um, they, they use language that makes you feel a particular emotion, such as scared or sad or any other type of emotion. Factual arguments use facts and statistics, so they refer to things that can be proven to be true. Both types of language and arguments are extremely effective in persuading people to believe what you believe. So if you want to be most effective, you will use a combination of them both. So there's some examples to follow, so please look at those before you go into your analysis. So you have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet I am one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? 
The popular idea of cutting our emissions in half in 10 years only gives us a 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees of warming and the risk of setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. So the sections highlighted, um, which are in green, um, demonstrate emotive language. So, for instance, stolen my dreams. How does it make you feel? It makes you feel guilty. It makes you feel horrified. People are suffering. People are dying. So you've got repetition of people and two very negative verbs there, suffering and dying, in the present tense to make them more powerful and impactful. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. You've got the alliteration there, entire ecosystems, not just, you know, a couple of plants, emphasising the scale of the devastation, again, making you feel sad, guilty, scared, terrified, as with mass extinction. So everything in green and also irreversible makes you feel very scared. And then you've also got factual. So cutting our emissions in half in 10 years, 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees makes us seem very credible and knowledgeable. Again, lending weighting to the emotive language. So what you need to remember is that emotive language and factual language go hand in hand. By seeming more credible with your facts, then when you make emotive arguments, people pay more attention. So please pause the video now for 10 minutes um, or so in order to go through the speech and pick out emotive language in one colour and logical factual language in another colour. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is read through the speech, but only read the emotive part aloud to yourself. Then read through it again, but only read the factual part to yourself. Then I would like you to draw and complete the table in your book. So we've got Greta's use of emotive language was effective because, Greta's use of factual language was effective because. So pause the video for five minutes to do that now. Okay, so you should have got something like this. Greta's use of emotive language was effective because it appeals to the emotions of the audience. Feelings make people take action. It is human nature to act on feelings. Greta's use of factual language was effective because factual information can give gravity to the emotional information. It makes the information reliable, formidable, and it means it cannot be challenged. So if you didn't get anything down or didn't, uh, um, you're not convinced what you wrote was correct, please could you correct it now or write something similar to what's on the slide. Okay, combining emotion and facts. I would like you to watch Greta's delivery of the speech on YouTube. So pause the video and follow the link. I would like you to answer these questions. What effect does the combination of emotive language and factual language have on the success of Greta's speech? Do you think her delivery was effective? How could she have improved it? For this, you can think back and look back at your notes for the lesson when you study the presentation of speeches. So pause the video for 10 minutes or so to answer those questions. Okay, so these are some of the things you may have written down. What effect does the combination of emotive language and factual language have on the success of her speech? By combining both emotive and factual language, it makes her message indisputable. She uses our weaknesses, our emotions, to tear us down and enforces this message but giving scientific, by giving scientific facts so that her message is ingrained. Therefore, we are more likely to act. Do you think her delivery was effective? How could she have improved it? She uses very emotional facial expressions. She looks physically upset. She pus pushes her hand up and down to emphasise um, the key emotive points about her dreams and her childhood. She pauses after using the emotive language, such as people are dying. She gets more and more upset as her speech progresses and has tears in her eyes. Long pause to emphasise the, the how dare you and to compose herself and allow the message to sink in. Emphasises words such as we will never forgive you. Perhaps more em emphatic hand gestures to emphasise her points could be helpful and perhaps standing would be better. So if you never got all of these or everything on this slide, please pause to add it to your notes. Okay, now it's your turn. I would like you to write a speech to fellow students 
arguing the importance of being environmentally friendly. So plan first. You will need evidence. Research this on the internet. How will you open and close? What language techniques will you use? Write one for each that you will use. Plan each paragraph. Write a topic sentence for each paragraph so you know what the paragraph will be about. Don't forget the basics. Spag, good quality of vocabulary, range of sentences and punctuation. Perhaps use one of the sentence starters below to get you started. 1. We need to act now. If we don't, what future do we have? 2. You might think that the future doesn't really matter to you because you believe there are a few decades left. However, climate change is happening now. 3. The air is going to kill us. We are running out of food. Animals are dying. So please pause the video for 20 minutes to do this now. Okay, so that brings us to the end of today's lesson. Thank you very much for your work. Um, there's very, some very poignant messages in this one, so it's one to remember. And um, please remember to send me your work for achievement points. It's a really easy way to get some achievement points stacking up on class charts for when you return um, back to school. So please do that. If you're doing the work anywhere, you might as well get credit for it. And I would really love to see what you come up with. So thank you once again and I will see you next time.